their job, it's their duty. But what is it that they're fighting for? What is it they, that they think about in, in a swamp or a rice paddy, uh, ducking bullets and mosquitoes? Home, that's what. This town. The way things used to be. You think they want to come back and find out that behind their back somebody has junked their cannon and, and put in a... A dumb old fountain. That's yeah, why yeah, you don't yeah, get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, Mr. Barrett. Hold it. You're telling the wrong fella. Oh, you're a man of influence here. You run the newspaper. Save it. Come with me. Frank, anything comes up, I'll be at the mayor's office. What'd you say his name was? You caught it. It's Kilroy. Your idea of a joke, Barrett. I'm a busy man. His name is Kilroy, and I suggest you listen to him. <clears throat> Go ahead, Kilroy. Tell him, Oscar. Tell him about the swamps and rice paddies and the mosquitoes. Uh, I, I got a little teed off, Mayor. Uh, I didn't mean to come here and... What Kilroy was suggesting is there are sons of this town fighting overseas. A voting age, incidentally who aren't going to be very happy when they come back and find the town cannon has been torn down and replaced by a bunch of cupids spurting water. That matter has been settled. It was passed by the town council. And we don't need any outsiders butting in telling us what to do. Well, it shouldn't have to be an outsider. You don't know what you have here, Mayor. You don't appreciate your town. You don't know how lucky a guy is to have something like this to come back to. And how long have you lived here, may I ask? Four or five days. Uh, how long do you have to live here? Hmm. How long have you lived here, Mayor? How long have you been in office? I am proud to state that I have had the privilege of serving this community for 19 years. Well, then, as one of our uh, ancient monuments, uh, you wouldn't care to be replaced, would you? What do you mean by that? I made some notes for an editorial we're running in our next edition. Fourth of July edition. Would you like me to read them to you? Well, I'll read them anyway. I thought I'd head it. The old gray mayor. He ain't what he used to be. <laughs> I've got to give you credit because you wrote this editorial practically. It consists simply of a reprint of the deathless words spoken by your honor on July 4th, 1946 at the dedication of the memorial cannon. I'm not going to bore you with the entire speech. But I'd like to remind you that you closed with these ringing words. The memory of that noble sacrifice and of those who gave their lives, the finest flower of Wilton Junction, will ever live enshrined in our hearts and in this cannon. Well, that memory has just been carted off to the junkyard with your approval. It was not with my approval. It was done behind my back. Well, I, I never intended for that cannon to be junked. If it has been, it's an outrage. I thought you'd see it that way. Howdy, Mayor. Say, if the town wants that cannon back. Well, now, that cannon's worth a good $50 just to scrap. $50? Better watch yourself, Mayor. This cannon's getting more valuable every second. Well, all I can say is, if scrap metal's worth anything like that, the tax assessor's gonna have to reappraise the assessments around here. The taxes just went up. Now, hold on. Well, you think about it, but don't take too long. It's blackmail. It's statesmanship. <laughs> One 
On this program, we're bringing you another episode of our story, Kilroy. And though it was really unintentional, this has turned out to be a very instructive and educational show. For instance, you're going to learn all about judo, and also all about boot camp, how to follow up a love affair, how to stop gang warfare, and how to build a booby trap. Of course, if you're figuring on doing any of these, it helps to have an ex-Marine around. Now, after all of that, one might think this is a mighty violent program, but it really isn't. As you'll see now in part two of the story of our ex-Marine, Kilroy. Hey, watch it, will ya? What's that you making? A booby trap. What does it look like? What's a booby trap? Something to catch boobs with. Your boob. Step over it. Gladys. Hi, Mother. Well, welcome. 
Silly, aren't you going to say hello to your sister? You haven't seen her in two weeks. I did, Mom. I said hi. Hey, watch it, Dad. Watch that string. What's that doing there? It's for an experiment. That's no place for it. Somebody could trip over. Silly! What are you doing, trying to kill us all? Well, gee, Dad, I tried to warn you. It's been like this ever since you left. It's for Louie and his gang. If they come sneaking around, to scare them off and warn us. You see, the string pulls the switch, and the switch is connected to the battery. And the spark coil makes a spark. And... This your idea or Oscar's? Well, Oscar was telling me how they laid minefields in the Marines. We don't need a minefield in our front yard. Well, gee, Dad, it'd be great for burglars to scare them off. I'd rather have the burglars. I'll tell Oscar Glass here. Oscar, he'll have that boy blowing the roof off yet. Who's Oscar? Oscar Kilroy. I wrote you. One of Greg's buddies in the Marines. Oh, yeah. See, Greg uh, asked him to stop by and see us, so naturally we invited him to stay. He didn't have to accept. Well, Greg would have wanted us to. I mean, there was his room empty. He's really very nice. I mean, we're, we're terribly fond of him, really. It's just that, um, well, he's been terribly nice to Billy. We've been occupied, that's what. The Marines have landed. Sam, uh, Oscar, I don't think you've met Gladys. This is Billy's sister. Hello. Oh, hi. I've been hearing a lot about you. I've heard a lot about you, too. Uh, from Greg, I mean. Oh, gee, you don't look anything like your picture. 